This is a different type of video because today we're talking about not what the one piece is but it does correlate because essentially we'll be talking about raftel and the huge implications from one piece stampede that we found out about raftel again i haven't seen the movie but this is a major spoiler from the movie what i mean is this is a cool thing to find out in the movie it does not change anything with the movie as far as the overall plot but it does add a lot of context to the final island to find the one piece so if you don't want to be spoiled please leave now and go watch the movie and come back personally i don't think it affects the enjoyment of the movie but it's something cool to find out in the movie I would kind of compare it to finding out that Aokiji got his leg taken off in film Z. While it would be cool to find that out while you're watching the movie, it doesn't really change the plot of the movie at all. I've thought a lot about what the One Piece could possibly be, and sometimes I find myself drawing a blank or just saying the cliche things that everyone has probably discussed before. Something related to the world government, an ancient scroll about the void century, a devil fruit, something significant that's going to alter the whole landscape of the world. At times I wonder about Roger's journey and the whole purpose of it. Like what was Roger supposed to accomplish? Was it just starting this new era of piracy? And was Whitebeard supposed to continue it? But again, this new information gives some more context to the One Piece. So in the story of One Piece, we find out that the last island to go to to find a One Piece is Raftel. You accumulate the road poneglyphs, it tells you the location of Raftel. And that's the final place you go to find a One Piece. Apparently in One Piece Stampede, the way we've been saying it, or the translation of Raftel has been incorrect. The actual canon version of Raftel is Laugh Tale. When I found out about this, I think my jaw dropped for a bit because immediately I thought about just the Will of D and the huge implications that might have. Obviously, this is tied to the Void Century, and this is all a setup for someone worthy enough or someone who has the actual power and influence to change the world, to fix the world as they see fit. The Will of the in general is a conversation that could lead nowhere, but could lead to various places. I thought it was interesting in chapter 100. The narration was, these things cannot be stopped. An inherited strength of will, one's dreams, the ebb and flow of the ages. As long as people hunger for freedom, these things will exist. Gold Roger, the king of pirates. And this is the chapter in which Dragon shows up and stops Smoker. But at the beginning of the chapter, Dragon says a pirate, eh? Not a bad idea. Which I think goes into the thought process of Dragon being just so against the world's government. He's like, that's not a bad idea, being a pirate, just not a marine because we know what they represent and who they fight for. One Piece chapter 301 is one of the most enlightening chapters about the history of One Piece and how you connect everything, I mean, via the Void Century, the Will of D. And I love how Oda uses Robin to break down all of this information for us and deliver it in a way that's not too revealing, but gives us an idea of what's to come. First, we get information on the ancient weapon, Poseidon. And Robin is not too intrigued by that because of course, she wants to find out more about history, but uncovering information about their great weapons leads to only more disaster. She even said it was a waste of effort. This is not something I wish to learn about. But then the text carved by Roger in which he says, we followed the text and followed its guidance resonated with her. First, it confirmed that Gold Roger also came to Sky Island and whatever he had or whatever the One Piece is could be tied to his journey to Sky Island or his journey, obviously his journey throughout the One Piece world. Robin essentially in chapter 3 one foreshadowed the existence of the road poneglyphs. She said, come to think of it, there are two types of poneglyph stone, stones with information and stones that show the locations of the others. She says, this stone is a stone with information. So can it be that the true historical text is actually, and it veers off, which means that the poneglyphs could actually be a map or somewhat pieces of a puzzle. She says that I'm sure by connecting them and reading them, they'll become a document that fills the blank history for the first time. Connecting them will complete a text, the real poneglyph, which doesn't yet exist. I'm certain that the Park King Gold D. Roger has delivered this document to his destination. Another interesting part in chapter 301 is when Robin is asked, hey, that guy wearing the straw hat, he reminds me of Roger. Are they related? Or are my senses getting dull with age? She says his name is Monkey D. Luffy. I think he is an interesting person. He then says D, 
I see they have the same initial. Is that why they're so similar? And Robin says, or perhaps the connection between them is another lost history. The will of D and whatever is passed on, obviously Luffy is inheriting Roger's will. And someone mentioned this before talking about the journey that Luffy has taken and getting to Sabodi Archipelago, in which at Sabodi, they highlighted that there's different ways to get to Sabodi. Luffy chose the route that Roger chose. Luffy and Roger had almost the exact same route in which you have to go to Sky Island and using that log pose, which is further indication of their connection. That's why I believe Wano to be such an important arc in the series of One Piece, because everything is connected there. First off, the Kozoki clan, they actually made the Poneglyphs. So what information, what history are we going to find out in Wano about the Poneglyphs? Obviously, this is a puzzle and we are fitting everything together to figure out exactly what the One Piece is before we get to the One Piece. And I think we're going to get so close to what it is, where we're going to think we know what it is, then once we get there, it's not going to be what we think at all. I think it's going to throw everyone for a loop. But in regards to Laugh Tale, I just referenced the Will of D as far as like how it could tie into the final island or the road Poneglyphs glyphs and the one piece we talked about the poneglyphs them being a puzzle towards laugh tale we talk about gold rogers journey and how that's important to obviously one piece and his execution how it started the great new pirate era all this seems to have been calculated first of all roger giving himself up and he knew he would be publicly executed i think this is part of it knowing that he essentially was not powerful enough or he was not in a position yet to complete whatever it was that he learned from these poneglyphs or he learned from the void century knowing that he had to give himself up and sacrifice himself for the new generation as important as roger was he was a cog in this plan him and his crew essentially was to carry out the mission that luffy and his crew are to fulfill but this takes us all back to whitebeard before whitebeard's death we had a moment between him and roger roger asked whitebeard if he would like to know how to get to raftel Whitebeard said, even if he told me, I wouldn't go. I'm not interested in that. He even talks about the propaganda that the world government was spreading about his name. Calling him Gold Roger instead of Gold D. Roger. Trying to dispel the existence of the D clan. Trying to remove the D clan from history as they did in the past. He says, my name is Gold D. Roger. Whitebeard then says, I run into the guys with D now and then. I've got one in my crew. What does the D mean? Roger says, I'll tell you. When I heard Laugh Tale. The first thing I thought about was this conversation, but not between Whitebeard and Roger, but Whitebeard and Blackbeard, in which he says, it's not you. The man Roger is waiting for is definitely not you, Teach. And this is directly after their encounter in which Blackbeard was almost killed by Whitebeard. And of course, he wallowed in pity and he begged for his life. Then Whitebeard goes on to say, there are those who inherited Roger's will. And one day someone will appear who will inherit Ace's will. As long as that bloodline survives, their flames will never die. That will has been passed down from long ago. And in the future someday, a man will appear bearing the weight of centuries of history on his shoulders to challenge the world. Sengoku, your world government is afraid. Afraid of the coming war that will engulf the world. I wasn't interested. But when someone finds that treasure, the world will be shaken to its core. Somebody will find it. That day will certainly come. The One Piece is real. One Piece la. Oh, oh. Another moment in which Whitebeard knew a lot of eyes were on him and taking it back to his conversation with Roger and then what he said about Blackbeard saying that Roger isn't waiting for him and knowing the last location is Laugh Tale, a tale of laughter, knowing about the D's and how they smile in death and Blackbeard and some of his tendencies and him as a character, he didn't do that. Whitebeard somehow tied these two together and told Blackbeard that he was not the one. So with all that being said, what is the conclusion? What does Laugh Tale mean to the entirety of the story? For me, Laugh Tale is an island lost in history prepared by the D clan. If we are to believe the story in the context of One Piece, there are characters or people in the world that can foresee the future. I believe the D clan knew of their erasure of their coming doom before it happened. And with this, they had a plan in place to record history and a plan in place to eventually someday find that one person that could uncover this history and essentially tell the world of what happened. 
With this, the Poneglyphs were made. Laugh Tale was established as that last place in which this person would happen upon this place after an intense journey, going through the world, learning the history of the world, learning the history of the D Clan, and then essentially having the power to change it, having the power to fix it. Making Laugh Tale a location that's very difficult to come by was important because this person had to be in a position in which they could affect history and essentially affect the future. Really talked about Ohara and how the Oharans, they wanted to uncover history, but they were not in a position to change history. One Piece is so important that once you find out about it and find out about the Void Century, you have to be in a position to change it. Roger sacrificed his life for that purpose. He knew that he was not in a position Position to change anything. Even with all the power he had, he was sick. And to accomplish whatever that is, which obviously involved a direct conflict with the world government, he couldn't do. So Laugh Tale is essentially a gathering of information left behind by the D-Clan. And it can only be followed up by someone of the D-Clan. Whereas Whitebeard saying he wasn't interested, I don't think Whitebeard could even accomplish what Luffy can. And the thing is, it's not just strength. A lot more goes into it. And of course, as the story goes on, we're going to find out more about it and uncover more about the history of the Kozoki and the D clan, how the Skypeans tied into it. And I think Ohara, they had the right idea. For them, they felt like history should not be hidden from the world. History was a treasure to the world. The world had a right to know about history. But with that history, what would you do? If you can't affect change, why are you trying to initiate it? I know that's a mouthful. I know all of this could seem confusing, but I think it's clear that Laugh Tale is a destination for the D-Clan. Only someone of the D-Clan can directly not only find the One Piece, I think, but also use the One Piece to affect the outcome of the future and uncover history. So I believe with Blackbeard and his ambitions, it may disappoint him because Blackbeard's goal is completely different from Luffy's, even though they have the same objective. Luffy's goal is just to be free. Blackbeard's goal is to be a pirate. Finding the One Piece is something he wants to do, but as far as ambitions, they're different. Luffy doesn't care about power and strength and dominion and rule. All those things matter to Blackbeard. Territory, strength, power. Finding the One Piece is nothing but a checkbox on the ascension of Blackbeard. Finding that One Piece is going to validate his journey. It's not to be free. So these very different ambitions and goals is going to factor into how they directly affect change. But we'll see how it plays out. But that's my thoughts on this entire thing. Again, very important information to the entire lore and history of One Piece. This goes to show just how deep One Piece goes. Because we don't even know where one of the road poneglyphs are. Right? We don't know about one of the road poneglyphs. It's still things to uncover. One Piece is just greatness. Guys, leave your thoughts below. How do you feel about all this? Like, Did this trigger anything in you? Do you have theories about what the One Piece could be? Leave it all below. I'm interested. And if we get enough great responses, I'll make a follow-up video as far as like what the One Piece is. And I'll go in-depth as far as like my thoughts about what the One Piece is. I think I did it here in this video. But again, leave your responses below. Like the video. Make sure to subscribe. Guys, One Piece is great. And I don't think I have to echo that anymore. It speaks for itself and I absolutely love this series and information like this just makes things just better as far as the end game of the story because you expect it to be something substantial and I personally cannot wait. Actually, I can because I want One Piece to go on for two more decades. <laughs> That's how much I love this series. But guys, leave your thoughts below. Again, like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next one.